The years may go by, but for many, the devastation never really dulls, right? This Sunday marks 21 years since 9-11, when al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked and crashed two commercial jets into the Twin Towers of Manhattan's World Trade Center. Terrorists also crashed a third plane into the Pentagon. A fourth jet crashed in a Pennsylvania field after passengers bravely attempted to regain control of the aircraft. If there is one company, because they targeted our finance system, our freedom, our success. If there's one company that symbolizes the tragedy, it is Cantor Fitzgerald, which occupied the five floors of the North Tower directly above where the plane crashed. 658 Cantor employees, wrap your mind around that, were killed. But if Cantor Fitzgerald is the face of grief, its leader, Howard Lutnick, is a shining example with he and his team of New York's resiliency. Howard was late to work September 11th. He was dropping his son off on the first day of kindergarten. His life was spared, but his best friend and his younger brother, both of whom were in Cantor's offices when the attack occurred, were killed. Since then, Cantor's famed annual charity day has raised money hand over fist to assist the families of those employees who were killed and also fill Cantor Relief's fund. The tally now stands at $369 million. But this is not just a story about generosity. It is a story of using success to triumph over tragedy. Ahead of Monday's annual charity day, Canner's chairman and CEO, Howard Lutnick, joins me now in a Fox Business exclusive. Uh, Howard, my friend, they always say that time heals all wounds. But, you know, does it, as the years go by, does it, does it get any easier to face these anniversaries? Well, you know, I, I get that feeling um, as this time gets closer and closer to me, you know, it sort of hair stands up in the back of my neck. And I just think of all my friends that I lost. So they stay in your heart. And then on the days getting closer to 9-11 and on charity day, they come right to the top of your mind. So does it get a little easier? I guess it gets a little duller is the right way to say it. Mm, a little bit, right? You know, I, I, I've covered you for so many years and watched as it all happened. Uh, you know, I think about all the stories, and some of them were really quite incredible, that you have shared with me, sometimes privately, sometimes publicly. The one that sticks out in my mind, because immediately, even as you were grieving all of these employees, is that you immediately thought, I have to rebuild the company, but pretty much from the ground up. I mean, let's just let's just call it that. You had the London office, but that was about it. You lost all these employees. You told me you had, well, your people had fired a guy on the Friday before 9-11, and that after this tragedy, you picked up the phone and you called him and you said, can you come back? I mean, that, that is just an amazing story that always sticks in my mind. Tell us what he said. Well, he came right back and he said, you know, we, we had only let him go because we were downsizing that particular area. And and he came right back and uh, and was so incredibly helpful. And the people uh, who helped the firm survive were amazing. They were amazing. It just they couldn't be any better, any kinder, any warmer. And that's why we survived. We, we survived because they, they were just incredibly behind us. Remember, we gave $180 million right away to the families, and that came because each employee, each employee gave 25% of what they earned to the families of those we lost. Can you imagine that? Mm. And speaking of employees, uh, to me, success is always the best revenge in many cases. And looking at what Cantor was back then, nine, pre-9-11, you had, what, about 10 offices globally. How many do you have now? So we have uh, just over 60 offices now, and we had about 2,200 employees then, lost 658, mm -hmm. and we had 960 in New York. So we had about half of our employees were in New York, and now we've got over 13,000 employees. So bigger, stronger. Um, we, we take really incredibly cool companies public. Uh, we've really got just a wonderful business now, uh, backed by incredible people. And, uh, you know, Cannon Fitzgerald was destroyed on 9-11. And uh, it's it's a wonderful place now. Yeah, well, so it was not destroyed. That, to me, is, is the crux of this story that I want our viewers to know. And if, if we could, I just want to dovetail a little bit, because one of the things that Cantor is now is one of only 21 primary dealers that has been granted the ability to trade with the Federal Reserve. I mean, that is just incredible. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to put on your market hat, Howard, and I know you're always game for this. The Federal Reserve, we get, you know, Christopher Waller today,
day, one of the board members said he wants another significant rate hike of 75 basis points in a couple in you know the September 20th meeting. So, tell me, you're always looking at the trade. You don't lament, oh, is it going to be too much or too little? What's the trade on that? So, forward rates. So where where people are expecting rates to be in one year, 3.9 percent. Come on. One year forward, 3.9 percent. That means the market is looking for at least two 75 basis point hikes. That's just what the market's looking for. So you've got to expect 75 now, another 75 coming. And then the question is, is that enough? And you heard Powell the other day. He said he's going to do it until he gets the job done. Yeah. No, no, what they think is getting the job done, you and I don't know. Right. But, uh, but you, I think the, it's got 275 basis point hikes in it now. Um, one coming soon and, and the next one coming. And uh, and I think that's why you've got the dollar so strong, right? You've got to think about it. You have the 10-year German is 200 basis points lower than ours. So you've got the dollar, you know, incredibly strong because we're raising rates much quicker than they will. Will they catch up? Of course they will. But that's what we're going to talk about next year. Our is that Europe's <laughs> raising their rates. Like, like but is pitch. that the trade? I mean, the dollar has had such a, a nice, unbelievable run. I mean, I think it's pausing just a bit. But I mean, parity with the euro, it almost hit parity with the, the British pound. Do you, do you see more of this rally continuing in the greenback? Yeah, the, do the dollar, what happens is rates are going to go up quicker. And, and anybody who talks about foreign exchange and doesn't really focus on the fact that the rates are, are quicker, um, it just misses the core issue. So uh, interest rates going up faster here. We just talked about it. Dollar stays strong, stays strong. Stocks have a tough bump of it because as interest rates go up. But companies like mine, like BGC, our wholesale a brokerage business, you know, we've been without interest rates for so long. Now that we've got all this movement of interest rates, it's great for business. So BGCP is going to have a, a great start of the next three years because mm -hmm. now there's interest rates, there's stuff to play with. Right, right, stuff to play with. But look, we're, we're we just were at hitting session highs for the Dow up 420. You know, you look at the rally from June, and then we had a bit of a sell-off the past three weeks, and now what appears to be another rally. Is this a bear market rally from where you sit, or is it the start of a new bull market, Howard, in equities? No, it's not the start of the bull market, in, unless you see the end of the Fed, which I don't see yet, unless you see the end of the Fed, it can't be a bull market beginning. The day we see the end of the Fed coming, the day we see it, that's the day you want to buy equities right then and there because that's the beginning of the new one. But when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, a little exciting. Oh, very exciting. And, and <laughs> SPACs, SPACs have kind of fizzled out. Not yours. You have some SPAC news about Rumble, your business that you have, uh, rever that you're looking to reverse merge with. Where do we stand on that? Okay, so Rumble will uh, will vote on uh, next Thursday and it'll probably close on the 16th. Yep. But Rumble is incredible. I mean, it's, it's a competitor to YouTube and YouTube has been throwing people off. So when I met them, they had 1.6 million users. Then they had 30 million users. A year ago, they had 40 million users. Last month, they had 70 million users, up 75% from last year. 75% mm. growth. They're growing as fast as TikTok was growing. Imagine TikTok growing. So this is a rocket ship because they throw off people because they censor them. And then they're all coming to rumble. And now it's become... You know, huge. So Rumble is merging with CFVI, yeah. and it's got such huge growth rate in front of it. Huge numbers. Uh, it's really exciting. That's a company we took public with our SPAC, CFVI, and um, you know, our business in SPAC continues to be great. We we're the ones who roll out the winners. You know, I'm not saying other banks haven't you know sort of come and gone. <laughs> we've had we've had a bunch of real winners lately. Um, you know, and they've been doing really good. Mondi, we did uh, just a couple of weeks ago. That's uh, up 30 percent. You know, these these companies have done well. Well, we're really looking well. we're looking at uh, CF Acquisition Corp from CF uh, IV, which, of course, CF Cantor Fitzgerald alive <laughs> and kicking. And uh, God bless you all over there. Thank you so much, Howard. Thanks, Liz. And, and thanks for really making us feel so good that you guys remember and you treat Always. it so respectfully. It, it's uh, it's an honor for me to be here. And it matters very much. And we will never stop telling the story, Howard. Thank you so much.